So what up, though? What up, though, guys? It's your girl, Jaja, and you already know you are tuning in, listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, what am I going to do? I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. Listen, it is Thankful Thursday, okay? We made it to the almost end of the week. Listen, we got the activities of our limbs. We in our right mind. We ain't in nobody's jail. And believe you me, they got space. I've been there, done that. So believe you me, they got a uniform for you. But listen, if you're tuning in, I want to talk to you guys all about do not disturb. Do not disturb. Okay, so listen, y'all, I just came back from New York, um, fashion weekend, absolutely amazing. When I tell you New Yorkers, New York, New York, I got so much more respect for you all because let me tell you something, the hustle in New York is real. Um, I'm super excited because God is allowing me to have some opportunities that I pray for when I ain't have nothing. I was living across the street in my little duplex, living my little best life with my little family, trying to make ends meet. And I used to pray and ask God, like, I know this is not the end. This is not the end. This is not where you just want me to be. This is not what the abundantly above all I could think of asked. This don't look like that. So because it don't look like that, I need to see what you see for me. So if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It, and before I take you back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about do not disturb. And if you know anything about a do not disturb, you know you got it on your phone. But before then, you know, we would have those little hanging things on the uh, that you would put on the door. And uh, when I was in New York, I had uh, put on a do not disturb, not because I had somebody in the room, so get your little mind out the gutter, but because I was trying to have peace of mind. And I was trying to get my mind right because I was getting ready to speak for the Sisters Inspiring Sister Summit. And so I had put the do not disturb sign on my door because I did not want to be bothered because I was trying to be focused. And see, in this season in your life, you're going to have to put up the do not disturb signal. Okay, whether it's on your phone or in your life in general, there are a lot of people in life that are going to try to reach out to you as you continue to grow and continue to build and continue to grow into your most authentic self. And people are going to be knocking. They're going to be looking through the peephole, seeing what they can see. People are going to be trying to text you and call you at the most inappropriate times. It ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I'm trying to be focused right now. Do not disturb. Because the minute that you allow people to disturb your life, guess what? Now you are distracted. You can't focus on what you were supposed to be focusing on because now they got you focusing on what they want you to focus on. I'm going to tell you something. What God showed me through a friend of mine, he said, you know, your light that shines, you're going to be placed in the darkest places. And I said, what? Say what? Come on now. What? He said, the light that you have, God is going to put you in the darkest places. This is not by happenstance that for those of you who live where you live and you do what you do because God has called you to be a light and the salt of the world. He didn't call you to be no Kool-Aid trying to be all up in the mix. He called you to be separate and set apart. But see, this is how people get messed up because they start diluting their own shine to make other people feel better. See, I live my life with no regrets. There are some mistakes I've made. And I thank God for his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness because, Lord Jesus, I'm trying to tell you, these folks will nail you to the cross. You look at them wrong. You do something wrong. Listen, they'll forgive this person over here, but will hold you hostage for something you did four, five years ago. Boo, we in a whole nother season in our world. I live my life with no regrets because I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. I want to be set free. And see, when you want to be healed, and you want to be delivered, and you want to be set free, guess what? You're going to operate and you're going to move in that way. See, let me tell you something. There are people who are healing. And if you know anything about healing, you ever scraped your elbow or your knee and you get that scab and it still hurt a little bit, but and, and if you touch that scab, it might crack and it may start bleeding. But when you're healed, you see the scar, but it don't. it no longer hurts. It no longer bleeds. It no longer feels the way that it once felt. And see, you got to find out what season you're in. Are you in a season of healing 
Are you a season of healed? Are you in a season of trying to be delivered of a situation? Because I'm going to tell you something. If you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take you back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. I'm talking all about do not disturb. Y'all know I did the clap, so you know that means it's serious. Do not disturb. Because I'm going to tell you something. People are watching you make different moves, whether it's loud moves or quiet moves. People are watching. Just like the old folks in the neighborhood when they watching their neighborhoods. I love my seniors over here in my community because they be telling me everything. Somebody was on your porch. Somebody knocked on your door. I, I love it. But this is the thing. You have got to get to a place in your life where you cannot allow things to disrupt the journey that you're on. Let me tell you something. There are demons assigned to destroy you. You This ain't no game. This is real. This spiritual mental war that's going on right now in this very moment is specifically assigned to each and every one of us and what we do with that what we do with that information what we do with that energy what we do with our families our friends and our community is all going to make the difference in making or breaking who we are and who we are going to become see one of the things that i've learned about dealing with being healed is that a healed person is not going to be distracted by an unhealed person. See, when you're healing and you are trying to get over a, a relationship and when you're trying to get back on your feet from financial ruins, when you're trying to get your relationship back with God, there are going to be things that are going to come to distract you. There are going to be things that are going to come to take you off your square. It could be a friend. They ain't do, trying to do you in or do you wrong. But see, you got to get to a place in your life where you're so disciplined or getting disciplined that you're not allowing anything or anybody to knock you off your square. Family disputes, friendship issues. Those are all do not disturbs in my in my book, because I'm going to tell you something. People who create the panic and the problem also have the solution. Our people, we are we've come too far. To not pay attention to the history that they use on us. See, the same people that created the panic is the same people who have the solution. The same people that's causing you to be fearful is the same people who got the financial holdings. See, this is why you got to understand history, not just flipping through the channels and scrolling through your phone. You're going to have to pick up some stuff and read it. You're going to have to understand the history of where our people have come from to know where you're going to go as a people. See, you can't understand business without understanding being black. You can't understand politics without understanding how it, is, how it has affected the black people in our community. See, a lot of us, we don't want to understand the grassroots of things. We don't want to understand the seeds of things. See, there are a lot of seeds that have been planted throughout our world, throughout our uh, culture and our community. And some of that stuff just grew. They planted seeds of envy within us. The colorization, light skin, dark skin, a seed. They threw in a seed of ego and pride. Oh, you better than this person because of classification. We're going to we're going to classify you. We're going to have the poor, the middle class and the upper class. See, they created these problems and these issues so that you can now figure out where you identify. Let me tell you something. When I didn't have a dime in my pocket, I was still walking with my head held high knowing that I am a queen, knowing that I'm royalty, knowing that I come from a culture and a people that are number one. We built pyramids. We created math. We created science. But when you don't know this about your culture, you start operating in any kind of way. You start listening to people who don't have nothing to show for what they're doing. That's why you can't listen to everybody. See, the only people that I listen to are people who got more than me. People that are doing better than me. I can't listen to you. You homeless. You, you, you over here. You over there. You're trying to figure it out here. You can't tell me anything. What you can tell me is not to live like you. Not to operate like you. See, when you paying attention to other people's lifestyles, you'll know, okay, that person is not producing any fruit. So because they're not producing any fruit, I'm going to love you, but I can't listen to you. Let me go over here because this person is producing fruit. Now, I'm going to tell you this. When you're around people that are producing fruit, don't come trying to pull fruit off the tree. See how you can help water the tree. 
How can you help nourish the tree? How you can make sure that the tree is maintained? Because there are so many people, family, friends, just take, 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 take. They don't ask you, you need any help. What do you do? What are you good? Because see, that's the difference between do not disturb and come on in. See, there are some people that call me and I don't answer the phone. Not because I'm mad at them. Not because I don't, I don't, you know, I feel some type of way about them or any of those things. It's because I'm in a season, do not disturb. When you're in a building season, a transition season, you need people in your life that's going to make things okay for you, not make things difficult for you. For us to know that we were enslaved, for us to know that they have caused us economic hardship, for them to know that they've taken away our quality education and hidden our history about ourselves, 400 years of you not knowing who you are, and, and now we've taken on European lifestyles, you don't even want to deal with people from the African descent, where you think you come from? They had us thinking that people over in Africa was all full of flies and big stomachs and we got to go over there and help them because they're so helpless, not knowing that Africa is the center of everything that everybody needs. Diamonds, gold, uh, ivory, ev everything. And not only that, but we are the chosen people. And when you understand that you are a chosen people, you can't be dealing with everybody. Let me tell you something. I will put my phone on do not disturb in a heartbeat. And I'm not going to be bothered by your feelings because right now I'm on a mission. And if you're not a part of the mission of helping me to obtain where I'm trying to go, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, financially, uh, if you're not here to help, you're here to hurt or hate. And I'm going to tell you something. People will do it with a smile. They, they, they your family, quote unquote, friends. Let me tell you something. If you're not adding to my life, you're either taken from me. And see, I have to pay attention to what is being deposited in my spirit. Some news segments I ain't going to watch. Some stuff I ain't going to give my attention to. You know why? Because I don't want that in my spirit right now. Let me tell you, I was yesterday I woke up feeling all refreshed. I yawned and rolled over and got out the bed. I was feeling good. Then I got a call from this broad with her foolishness. Mm -mm. Do not disturb. Do not disturb. Because this is the thing. We will become emotionally distracted. And see, people who you care about, you're invested in. But you got to be careful that you don't become emotionally distracted. Somebody will call you about an issue. And now you upset about somebody else's issue that don't got nothing to do with you. And now you focus on their issue. And now you can't get back to where you was trying to get back to. Emotionally disturbed. This is why if you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. I'm talking all about do not disturb. There are some people that I will answer my phone for in a heartbeat. You know why? Because they're not coming to destroy my life. They're not coming to disturb it. They're coming to tell me, hey, it's an opportunity on the flow. What you think? Hey, I'm telling you, you're doing a great job, sis. I love you. Hey, what you doing today? Let's go have some food. Let's go have some drinks. We ain't caught up in a while. Hey, listen, I seen the show. I'm motivated. Let's get it. Hey, listen, this is what we doing. What's up? What's up on the plan? Let's get this play together. What you what you got on it? This is what I'm doing. See, there are certain people that I can answer the phone for because I know they're not coming to disturb my life. They're coming to add value to it. And when you start paying attention to the people in your life, you'll start paying attention to who's coming to take and who's coming to give. There are some people that I can call that I know they're going to pray for me and not pray on me. I know there are some people that I can call that genuinely love me and want to see the best for me. And those are the type of people that you need in your life. And anything other than that, it's a do not disturb. Don't just dis don't come disturbing my peace. Don't come disturbing my life because you don't know what you got going on with yours. Let me tell you something. I had a young lady inbox me. I'm trying to put my phone on the charger, y'all. My bad. I forgot to do it. I was moving so fast this this afternoon. I don't know what that was all about, but you know how I go. You just got to keep keep the flow going because if you get distracted, you'll get all upset. And I can't afford that right now. You feel me? But let me tell you something. There was a point in my life where it was hard for me to deal with certain things until I realized you ain't got the proper armor on to deal with it. 
See, sometimes we deal with things because, and you know, I'm from Joy Road, so I know, listen, Joy Road eggs and nine come off the freeway. There are a few ways that I know how to handle things. And growing up, you only know how to handle things with ease, okay? And when I, listen, so when you're, when you're growing and you're healing and you're healed, this no longer is your first defense. This is no longer my first defense. When you are grown and you understand what life is all about, you're not pulling out a gun as your first defense. Now, sometimes there's going to be some situations where you're going to have to protect yourself because you know where we live. Ninjas is crazy and people is always watching to see how they can set another person up. But if you're paying attention to your life and the growth that you have, certain things are not going to always be your first defense. See, I had to learn, OK, what's the armor you got on for this situation? You got the breastplate of righteousness on. You got your helmet on. You got your sword, your, your word of God out. Because, see, there are some things that I don't even address no more. I take him up to the Lord in prayer. I find out what scripture is connected to. And I say, God, you take care of this. Oh, family acting crazy. God, you take care of it. Money funny and change is strange. Okay, God, you said I'm going to live an abundant life. I use my words and I use his word to him to let God know, hey, I didn't study this word and this is what you said. And not only that, but I also live my life accordingly. I ain't perfect. I am a true sinner <laughs> every day saved by grace. Okay. And I know this because I talk to God about my sins. I talked to him about my good, my bad, my ugly, and my indifferent. You know why? Because I want to live my life with no regrets. And see, at the end of the day, some of you all are falsifying your life when God know it all. You, you can be fake with us on social media. You can pretend with us on social media that you happy, that you living your best life, that you just, you got it going on and all this, that, and the third, because that's what social media has allowed so many people to do. You have, the social media has allowed you to be fake, phony, and misinformed. And then when people like me that are genuinely happy, genuinely real, real, you understand that that's a rarity. Real, genuine friendships, that's a rarity. Let me tell you something. There are some people who miss your love and miss your friendship, but they mistreated it. And now they don't know how to deal with it. There are some people that you thought value you, valued what you brought to the table, valued your friendship, valued your love. And all they did was show you that they didn't. And see, when you pay attention to people and they show you who you are or who they are, we got to stop making excuses for the folly and the foolishness. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you're walking upright and doing your best, and I ain't trying to say be perfect. I'm talking about your best. You're just doing what you can with what you have. People who aren't believers, they're going to look at what you're trying to build as impossible. Or they're going to try to copy because they do see that you're doing it and it is possible. That's why you got to be mindful of people who are in your circle and, and the people that you're investing your time with. Because I'm going to tell you something. Every one of my friends, you're going to get a return on the investment. When we sit down and we talk and when we kick it, we doing an update on our personal life and then we get into the business. And every conversation don't always got to be about business. And every conversation don't always got to be about personal. Sometimes people just want to get stuff off their chest so that they can move to the next level. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about do not disturb. Because, see, when I was in my hotel room getting ready to speak for the Sisters Inspiring uh, Sisters Summit in New York, I put the do not disturb sign on my door, which indicated don't come knocking on my door. Don't come bothering me. And it's the same thing in my life right now. I have on a do not disturb. Because if you allow people to come into your life, they will disrupt what you got going on. You focused, your skin glowing, you done got over that joker, you done got over that chick, you living your best life. It ain't where you want it to be. You don't got all the money. You ain't as successful, but you're getting there. And see, when I came back from New York, I was so frustrated with myself because I said, man, the hustle in New York is real. What am I doing? I ain't doing enough. I got frustrated with myself because I know what I'm doing is possible. So I need to get on my grind. I need to give my, my all. But but I knew I wasn't giving my all. You know why? Because I was letting people disturb my motions. Hey, can you look over this? No, you look over it. Hey, can you tell me what you think about it? No, you tell yourself what you think about it. 
Because see, people will start pulling at you, your expertise or whatever it is that you're doing. And now you helping somebody else build something and, and giving somebody else attention for something. And they ain't even putting they all into their own thing. Do not disturb. Do not disturb. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yeah, I Said It. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. Listen, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know Jaja. Just go click subscribe. Follow me on all social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, IG. Listen, you know me. Stop acting brand new because that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to be divided. He, yeah, Okay, you got 100 million followers and I got 3,000. What's the difference? It ain't like you paying your bills with these followers. No way. Matter of fact, we need to swap energy. Every black person that you know that's doing something positive, it ain't up to you to turn your nose up to them. Oh, they just trying to do something. They trying to be. Yes, we are. We all are trying to be great. What's the problem? See, this is where we get messed up as a people. You don't hear no Chinese people talking about, mm, look at her over there trying to open up another beauty supply store. Oh, look at her over there trying to open up another nail shop. We already have two of them. You don't hear not one Chinese person saying that. Do you hear any Africans saying, oh, look at them. They are over there trying to open up another braiding shop. Do you hear that? No, you don't. You hear us black folks always trying to dog another person that's trying to build something and do something with their life and you envious and you jealous and you prideful and you don't want to help them get ahead because it may make you look like you ain't doing nothing with your life. Well, guess what? You're probably not. Whose fault is that? I couldn't blame Tayshawn dad for me being a single mother. I'm the one that sat there and opened up my legs and, and slept with this man. So guess what? I'm just going to have to figure this out. See, we can't keep blaming people for the situations that go on in our life. Some of us are going to have to take, take responsibility to the stuff we've done. It's the same thing with the people that are leading our country. They give us this panic only to turn around and give us the pill. The same people that caused the panic is the same people who got the solution. Why they giving us out va free vaccines, but they ain't giving out free chemo? Why they ain't giving out free radiation? Why they not giving out free insulin? Y'all need that too? That, I ain't never seen them give out no free insulin. You know why? Because it's a money thing. It's profits over people. And see, when you understand your power, yeah, they may have the money, but we got the people. And if you understand your position as the people, you will understand why they doing what they doing for these profits. See, the wealthy, the wealthy want to maintain the wealth because, see, the enemy. The enemy is a liar. The devil is a liar. His mama a liar. His daddy a liar. And if he had a grandma, his grandma would be a liar, too. And see, this is why you got to be paying attention when people are lying to you. And giving you false information and giving you portions of information that they want to give. You better start paying attention to this stuff. Stop being so dang on naive. Acting like, oh, I ain't know. You knew. You knew. And see, when we are misinformed and when we're fearful and the enemy causes fear in our life. And all these people, saints and ain'ts and all these people talking about they believe in God. And you over here, oh, I'm scared. I can't. I, uh, 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 uh. Huh? I'm not saying go be reckless. I'm not saying to go be wild. Because let me tell you something. I ain't going everywhere. Because everybody don't have a fighting chance. And they not doing something about building their lives. Everybody don't have a purpose. So people who don't have one, they going to live their life reckless. Because they ain't got nothing to lose. A person who, who done lost it all. They don't care no more about life. They just doing them. Guess what? They don't got nothing to lose. So they don't mind tearing up your stuff. It's just like a, a kid who's never had to be out on their own. They never had to buy groceries or pay bills. And now they understand the value of what parents were doing. See, new levels require new energy. I can't give you 2015 energy in 2021. I can't give you 2007 energy in 2021. This is a new energy. This is a new vibe. This is a new wave. And if you're not careful, you'll have that same 1999 energy trying to bring it into 2021. This is why some seniors can't, they can't operate in this new wave. That's why some business owners 
they couldn't catch up in this new wave. You know why? Because new levels require new energy, new mindset, new thought processes, new education. You're going to have to get off your butt and try to figure this thing out. Because if you don't, let me tell you something, you're going to get left behind. This is a season where things are moving. And you're going to watch people move and you're going to be mad. You're going to be mad. Okay, what was I doing? You, let me tell you what you were doing. You were watching other people do them instead of focusing on you doing you. See, one of the things that I've learned is that pride and ego won't let you fix what you need to fix. Pride, ego won't allow you to fix what needs to be fixed within your life, within your family, within your community, within your world. See, within your health, pride and ego. That pride and that ego and being in your feelings. Some of y'all be too far in y'all feelings. Ain't no money in there. Ain't no, ain't nothing in there. Ain't no, ain't nothing in feelings, but more feelings. What you going, what, what can you do with your feelings? You're going to take your feelings to DTE. They not taking that as a form of payment. You're going to, you're going to take your, you're going to take your feelings to the water and sewage department. They don't care about how you feel. <laughs> Clearly. What you, what you going to do with your feelings? Cause see at the end of the day, pride and ego keeps us behind as a people. Pride and ego keeps us behind as a community. Pride and ego keeps our family separated and distorted. Pride and ego keeps your business from flourishing to the next level because you don't want to have strategic partnerships. See, there are people out here that are making money moves. You know why? Because they're doing it together. There are families that are leading these communities. You know why? Because they're doing it together. They ain't always going to get along. Y'all not the same people. But guess what? One band, one sound. It's amazing how a band can have all different instruments, all different people from all different walks of life. But when you look at those notes and that music, guess what? They own one, one sound, one band, just like a group. They may all be different people from different walks of life, but when they sing together, they harmonize. That's why you, we can't talk together, but we can sing together. We gonna have to learn to put our pride and our ego aside and start fixing some of these situations. Don't want to apologize. Don't want to forgive. You want to be. You want to be upset. You like this feeling of uh, being beefed out with your own people. What type of energy is that? You know, there are some people that I look at, and I will never look at them the same again. Because you just can't understand how is it that we know what we know about our history. And we know what we know about where we come from. How is it that you still moving like a snake? How is it that you don't understand what it really means to be loyal? Why is it that you don't understand what it means to operate in your gift and, and your gift will make room for you? How hard is it for you not to hate on your own sister or your own brother? Why is it so hard for you not to big up your own people? I sit and I look at people that I grew up with and I can't even believe that some of the people have the mitigated audacity to even bring me that energy. Are you crazy? You got to be. Then I also look at people and I think. You are broken. And you don't even want to be healed. So instead of you going after the healing, you're going to go try to break somebody else. Instead of you fixing the problem, you're going to go take your problem across the street. And not only now do you have the problem, but now you done took the problem across the street. And now the people across the street got the problem. Do not disturb. If you're tuning in and listening to, yeah, I said it before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about do not disturb. I had to put the sign on the door. I had to put it on my phone. Because when I'm in a season of building what I'm building, I can't allow your insecurities, your minor thought processes to interrupt what I'm building. Do not disturb. Because people are coming to disrupt your life. And if you do not put them in the appropriate category, you'll be having people thinking they're your friend and they're your foe. You'll be thinking people, your family, they're your enemy. You'll have people thinking they're your business partner, but they're getting ready to undercut you like, like, like the old boy did on New Jack City. 
Y'all know, am I my brother's keeper? We always looking and waiting for a reason to cut each other down and, 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 and dog each other out. Instead of saying, hmm, how can I help her or him build what they build? Okay, or, or I can share it, boop. See, some people will watch me and they won't even share my stuff. But see, I'm going to tell you something. God going to put me in a position where you ain't got to share, baby, because it's going to be seen around the world. See, and this is what you got to understand about God. What God, what the devil meant for evil, God will work it out for your good. Oh, they talking about you? Don't worry about it. God going to work it out for your good. Oh, they tried to set you up? Oh, don't worry about it. God going to work it out for your good. Oh, they ain't trying to he help you? Don't worry about it. They going to wish they had. Just be easy. Because I'm going to tell you some insecurities will have you thinking the wrong thing. You know how many women I come across insecure? Last week, I did my show without my wig on. I bet you it made so many people feel better about themselves. Like, wow, she don't have no hair. But guess what? No hair, don't care. I slap a new wig on my head in a minute. I take my wig off in a minute. And guess what? Keep it moving. What are you going to do? Nothing. Because I'm going somewhere and I'm doing something and I can't be disrupted and I can't be disturbed by the little small things. See, what I've learned in this season, when I put up my do not disturb, real love is rare. Real love. I ain't talking about that fake love. I'm talking about real love. People who say they're going to do what they're going to do. People who show up when they say they're going to show up. People who going to support you when they say they're going to support you. People that do what they say they're going to do. That's real love and it's rare. Everybody don't have that in them. Everybody, everybody can show you love, but they ain't going to show you loyalty. It's a difference. It's so a lot of people out here showing a lot of fake love, but they ain't loyal. They going to jump for whatever. Listen, let me tell you something. A dog will leave his master for a bigger bone. You hear me? A dog will leave his master for a bigger bone. That means that a friend, a family, a foe will leave you for a bigger, better opportunity and cut you out. That's why I love, I don't need that. Because if you had real love for me, we wouldn't be in the situation that we in. If a person had real love for you, you wouldn't have to question their love for you. Person that got real love for you ain't going to make you question it. Anybody that know me, that know I've ever been a friend of them, they know I was a friend of them. Anybody that I'm a friend with now, they know I'm a friend. Anybody that knows I'm a family, they know I'm a family. So at the end of the day, real love is rare. And when you get it, you better hold on to it. Some of you all have had some people really genuinely love you and you've effed them over. You effed them over and now you ain't got no real friends. You got all a bunch of people around you that 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 uh, feed off of your expense. You're getting drunk. They love your entertainment. You, you, you got everybody at your house. And the minute that you shut all of that down, the minute that you start changing up and switching up, guess what? They're going to switch up right along with you. Because we living in a world what we we're living in a world with a bunch of spineless punks, a bunch of lying Larry's and Lisa's and authentic and real. Let me tell you something. I enjoy the authenticity when I talk to individuals and the realness that people come. And that's why I love the Holy Spirit that God has given me because it allows me to see right through you like saran wrap. That's why certain people, they don't want to talk to me. They can't deal with me. Oh, you don't want to, oh, you, you ain't effing with me. Guess what? Good. Because you know, I see the snake in you and I operate on my feet, not on my belly. And so you got to watch people who call themselves ghosting you and cutting you off. Let go. Let them cut you off. Let them, let, Listen, let me tell you something. If you got to cut somebody off for of your peace of mind, guess what? That's just what you're going to have to do. Yeah, I said it before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. And if you're tuning in, I'm talking all about do not disturb. Listen, make sure you tune in to the show on tomorrow. My very special guest is Mr. Al Bartell of Times Square uh, cl Men's Clothing, uh, Red Door. Listen, he's doing a 100 Women in Heels event right here in Detroit right here on the Avenue of Fashion, and it's free. Just register, sign up, come in your best heels, your best outfit, and come looking cute, dressed to the nine, because they're going to have a first place, second place, third place. It's going to be on the news. It's going to be popping. So let me tell you something. They did 100 men in suits, 
and it did 1.4 million across the board. Okay, we we ended up on the shade room. So let me tell you something. Things are happening in our communities. You just got to be around the right people that are moving. But you got to bring something to the table too. People around me, they just not here to take. They here to help. What you need me to film? What you need me to record? What you need me to write? How can I help you so that you can help me? Because that's what we had before we had money. We had a barter system. Sometimes you ain't going to always have it. But if you speak up and you talk and, and tell a person what it is up front instead of trying to be sneaky on the back end. I had a girl call me talking about, do I, do I want some ombre eyebrows? Girl, did I ask you for that? No. Are you trying to charge me? What you trying to do? Be up front. I ain't got time to be trying to peel through all the layers. Say what you need to say so we can keep it moving. I don't talk to you. You don't talk to me. So you coming out of the woodwork for something. What do you want? Because right now my life is on do not disturb. Don't disturb me. What do you want? Because at the end of the day, a liar gonna lie and a hater gonna hate. You just make sure that your integrity speaks for itself. Your work speaks for itself. See, this is the thing. I am a host extraordinaire. I do it in my sleep. You hear me? I'm a speaker, an international speaker. I do it in my sleep. The energy that God has given me, that he has possessed in my heart and my soul, it cannot be disturbed by your fakeness. It's not going to be disturbed by your shadiness. I've sat in the room with women who talked about their own friends. How do that work? So if you want to talk about a friend to me and I'm new to this position, I know you'll dog me. See, that's why you got to start paying attention to the conversations that people are having. You got to start paying attention to how people move. Yeah, they saying one thing, but you better watch how they move. There are some friendships I don't want back because you shysty and you shady and they may not see it, but I know. And I'm OK with me knowing and maybe the world not knowing, because guess what? Everything is going to come out. Let me tell you something. My grandma used to say, if they don't catch you in the wash, they're going to catch you in the rinse. You understand what I'm saying? So it's only a matter of time before they see the fakeness and faultiness on you. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it. And y'all already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to add more to it because I know you heard me the first time. I'm talking all about do not disturb. Because there's got to be a time in your life where you allow and ask God for discernment. Discernment means I need to understand what's happening in my world. And even if you don't understand the mysteries of God, he's going to give you a peace that surpasses all understanding, even if you don't get what's happening in your world. There were things that were happening to me and I didn't understand why it was happening to me. I didn't understand why my best friend slept with my son father. I didn't understand why, why a chick at my church married my ex-husband and was sleeping with him and they was having an affair. I didn't understand why I was homeless and I had to stay at the Western parking lot because I couldn't afford a hotel room because my, I couldn't pay no more for an extended stay. See, people didn't understand why I had to get on the bus or walk, or be a single mother, or get my son to the next level. But guess what? I did it, and I didn't understand what was happening in that season. But let me tell you something about God. God will walk you through your struggle. It don't feel good. It hurt. It, it, it feels like that thing in your throat when you're about to cry. It's that thing in your stomach where you just say, God, just kill me. Just take me out, because I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't handle this no more. I can't deal with this. This is too much. There were times in my life where I'm literally looking at the ceiling leaking. I got to get these kids to school on E. My ex-husband stole $5,000 out of my account and left me with $34.12. I still got to figure out how I'm going to get this together. Still operate my business with a smile for my customers. Still going through the motions as a, as a black woman. Still having to deal with not being told you're aggressive. Oh, I, but but I, I ain't aggressive. I'm assertive because I know what I want. And I'm not about to sit here and let you try to play me and give me this bootleg save a lot version when I know I deserve the Kroger brain. I'm not going to let you give me a bootleg version of what I know I deserve. And see, when you start knowing what you deserve, you start eliminating certain situations out your life. You recognize it. 
Oh, you coming to disrupt. Oh, you coming to disturb my life. You coming to disrupt my peace. And even when ain't nobody around, sometimes it be you disrupting your own peace. See, I'm a thinker. I'm a thinker, y'all. I sometimes I done overthought myself into a situation that I ain't had no big. I didn't I, because I think. I think about the whole outcome. I think about how it's gonna happen, the people involved, what they make do, the environment, the weather. I, I think about it all, right? And and if you're a thinker like me, right? And you're you're thinking, okay, about these scenarios, how this person gonna act, how this person gonna respond. I had to stop that. Because we will overthink ourselves right into a stressful situation. It ain't even what it was. And I'm going to tell you something about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will have, yeah, it'll have you dancing and speaking in tongues, but it'll also have you apologizing. It'll also have you checking yourself when you're wrong. It'll also have you speaking up on situations that you know you should speak up on. See, that's what the Holy Ghost will do. That's what the Spirit of God will do. Some of y'all got a spirit, but it ain't a God. Y'all will sit around. Talk about people like like we're literally coming out of a pandemic and you still you still operate like that. Like you still messy, like you still in drama, like you still you still getting drunk and falling out. And, and huh? Like people dying left and right and you still hold grudges. Huh? What? Our parents is dead and, and you still moving like that. You just lost your grandma and, and granddaddy and, and all these different people and, and, and family members are still moving like that. They ain't got the spirit of God. They got a spirit, but it ain't a God. Because I'm going to tell you something. A, a spirit of God will have you checking yourself. See, the spirit of God will have you checking yourself before you ever check another person. You're going to check you first because the Holy Ghost going to say, nah, be. Check you, what you do, because now you can you can hone in on your part. And see, one of the things that I love about about growing, about moving, is that you don't think you're better than nobody else, but you recognize that you're better than what you used to be. See, when you're growing, you don't think you're better than nobody else. You just know that you're better than what you used to be. See, there are a lot of people out here that think they're better than other people because they have a certain economic status or a, cer a, a certain social status. Baby, when you die, they're going to put you in that box, whether it's the coffin or the little box or urn that they put you in. That, that don't make you no better. When you die, they're going to give you that same death certificate from whatever county that you live in. And they, your cause of death is going to be right there. Your occupation is going to be right there. It's going to say, who are you leaving your stuff to? It's going to be right there. I know because I had to make death certificates as a clerk working for Wayne County. And I used to see these death certificates and I would look at them. And I would look at the occupation and I would look at the the, the life that they lived in and the time of death and, and the date of birth on, on their certificate. Your life is that dash. So you better make that dash count. You better not get distracted or disturbed by other things that mean nothing of where you going right now. Oh, he broke my heart, girl. Yeah, he broke your heart. But guess what? It's a whole bunch of men out here that's looking for a lovely lady like you. Oh, she did you wrong. Well, guess what? It's a lot of beautiful ladies out here that's looking for a loyal man like you. Don't be fretting over. I tell my son all the time, you are not cemented to nothing and nobody. And the minute that you realize that you operate in a freedom. One of the biggest transformations that I made was telling the truth to myself. See, some of y'all lie to yourself. That's why it's so easy to lie to others. But when you start telling the truth to yourself, it'll make it easy to tell truth to the other people. I don't like lying. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, I got a lot of you folks. What you going to do? You going to whoop me? And tell you the truth. Now, what you did, what you do with that truth is on you. See, some people don't like the truth because it makes them feel uncomfortable and uneasy. And now they got to check themselves. See, people don't want to check themselves, but they want to check you. They never want to re-examine themselves, but they want to let you have it. You ain't this. You ain't that. You think you're this. You think you're that. Well, what about you? You do realize 
you are not perfect either. You do realize, see, people don't know your business. That's why you think you're better. If, the, if, if they open up the door of your closet and all them skeletons fall out, you're going to be trying to collect them so that don't nobody know what you into. That's why you got to live your best life and not worry about the pronosticators, the haters, the naysayers, the, the fake family, the fake friendships, all of that. Don't concern me no more. You don't like me? Cool. Join the group. Join, join the rest of the fan club that act like they don't like me, but watch everything I do. Join the rest of the fan club that's hating on a sister, but everything I do, you trying to do it too. That's why I can't fret about the small stuff. If you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all said it. And before I take you back, I'm going to add more to it. And I'm talking all about do not disturb. Do not disturb. Because if you can be honest with yourself, you can be honest with the people out in the street. But if you lie to yourself, you're going to be lying to everybody. And let me tell you something. The only time that I look back, the only time that I look back, I look back for leverage. How far I've come. How far I need to go. What I need help with. What areas that I didn't complete. That's what I'm looking back at. I ain't looking back at no joker that I used to be with. Because he in the past. And he going to leave his ass in the past. I ain't worried about what we used to have. Guess what? If it was worth having, we would still have it. I ain't tripping about no friendship. Because if, if you was really my friend, we would still be friends. See, that's why you got to pay attention to the situation. If he really wanted to be with you, he would be with you. If he really didn't want to cheat on you, he won't cheat on you. If she really wanted to be with you, guess what? She'll be with you. Do not disturb. Because see, I look back for leverage. I don't look back for the love. Because let me tell you something. There's some love that I have for people who don't live here no more. He don't live here no more. It's all good. When I see him in the streets, if I speak, I speak. If I don't, I don't. I'm not bothered either way it go. Because, see, I can't look back and, 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 and start focusing on what used to be. Guess what? Yeah, we used to be cool, but clearly you was doing some F stuff that made me not want to be cool with you. So I'm going to leave you right where you at. Stay there. And I'm going to go over here. And see... It is uncomfortable at first because you're used to having people in your life. But I've learned in this season in my life, I got to I got to do Kim. Keep it moving. I'll be like, Kim, keep it moving. Let it go. Uh-uh. This ain't this ain't what it is. This ain't where it at. What you coming for? I had a guy calling me. What you what? What you calling me for? Keep it moving, sir. I, I don't have nothing for you because you got to get to a point in your life where you got to keep it moving. You, you can't sit around and cry over spilled milk. There were things that literally I thought was going to take me out. But guess what? I had to keep it moving. See, there are some people when life happens to them, they get stuck. They don't know how to maneuver. They don't know how to pivot. And so they start using people to try to get to the next level or get out their situation instead of let me kick it with God and figure out what strategy and steps that I need to take in order for me to get to the next level in life. If you're tuning in, you're listening to, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking all about do not disturb. Because I'm going to tell you something. When I was getting ready for my virtual conference, Sisters Inspiring Sisters in New York, and I had my do not disturb sign on my door, guess what? My computer started acting crazy. So here it is. Do not disturb. I'm in my zone. I done made sure my computer good. My audio's good. My value's good. And then all of a sudden, my computer ain't working. So I had to keep it moving. Computer don't want to act right. Here go a cell phone. I had to put my cell phone in front of the computer and make it do what it do. And while I was making the, the cell phone do what it do, I was still trying to operate that computer to get that computer right. Because I'm going to tell you something. The enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And if he can get you to just, just not believe in yourself just a little bit, he's already planted the seed of disbelief. If he can get you to doubt yourself just a little bit. You won't move forward to the dream and the vision that God gave you years ago. 
I was a little kid with a brush talking on a mic as if I was speaking in front of people. I used to make my brothers and sisters be my audience and clap and laugh. And, and, and whenever I had a, I would have them uh, get pieces of paper and I would pretend I was signing my autograph on their paper. That's how I played as a kid because I was preparing myself 20 years from now to speak on these stages and talk to these people and have audience members laugh because I envisioned myself having that happen. But guess what? The enemy don't want you to win and he don't want you to change the mindset or the trajectory of our people. That's why you got to understand what your what your position is in your community, what your position is in your family, what your position is as a black woman and as a black man. Ain't nobody got time to be beefed out with your old goofy ass. You ain't even got enough for me to even be beefed out with you for. And see, some of y'all is just so immature. Yeah, you older, but you a kid. I know teenagers is more mature than some of you adults. And at the end of the day, true peace and true happiness is light. It ain't heavy. My happiness, y'all feel it. Y'all feel this energy. It's the energy for me. Y'all feel this. Y'all ain't even, y'all not even in the same room with me, but you feel my vibe. You feel me. You know why you feel me? Because it's the God-given energy that he gave me. You know when you around people and you feel that weird energy that they feeding off. They trying to act like they so real. But you feel that thing. You feel it. You feel with somebody being shifty and shady with you. You don't know what they doing and you don't know the details, but you feel it. That's that Holy Ghost. That's that spirit, man. That's that spirit of discernment. And if you don't got it, you better ask God for it. Every day I get on my knees and I pray and I ask God for wisdom. I ask God for knowledge. I ask God for understanding. So that that way, when situations arise in my life that I don't really know what's happening, I have knowledge. I have wisdom to deal with it. And I have an understanding. Because see, when you got wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you move a certain type of way. You can deal with anybody in this world when you got knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And y'all ready for this? When you're operating in real love, you won't even worry about the fake love. Because I'm going to tell you something. That fake love didn't change me. It made me love more. It made me love the people who needed my love more. That's why when I talked about in the beginning of the show, your light, that so sh the light that God gave you, he's going to put you in the darkest places to let that light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify our father in heaven. See, God has put me in a position where people are seeing my good works. I had some bad works and, and some people seen it too. But see, just like they seen the craziness that I was doing, God going to put them, put me in position that the world is going to see the goodness and the greatness. See, people saw you how you used to be acting all crazy, doing all your little crazy stuff. And now you're in a position where you're not doing that. And God is going to allow you to be in the mind of others. Let me tell you something. There are people that are talking about me right now in a room that I don't even know for opportunities. I got a call the other day from some people in LA to do some things. And let me tell you something. I wouldn't have been able to get to where I'm getting to if I would let people disrupt and disturb me. I ain't let nobody disrupt what I'm building right now. You coming in here trying to disrupt my peace and coming in here trying to de de destroy what I'm trying to build. See, when people genuinely love you, guess what? They gonna come with a shovel. They gonna come with a rake. They gonna come with what you need. Oh, you need me to fold up these shirts at the clothing store? Here, I got time in between time. Let me help you. Oh, you 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 building a uh, you doing a show? Okay, well let me share. See, some of us don't like to share because we selfish. We are built things off being selfish. See, I don't operate like that because I can't. I'm the oldest of five sisters and three brothers. My whole life I've had to share. So in this season right now, God is allowing me to do me because he's seen how much of a giving person I've been. 
I've been a giving friend of my time, my energy. I was a giving family member. I was a giving partner in partner relationships. And anybody that know me, they can't say that it ain't true. I'm a whole vibe by myself. And when you know you've had genuinely real rare people in your life, it ain't up to you to dog them. You love on them. You apologize. You ask for forgiveness. You build those relationships, but it can't be built off no faulty stuff. We are in a season where people are dying left and right and you up here trying to give out fake love. I don't want it. Do not disturb. And if you're tuning in, you're listening to Yah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it because I'm going to tell you something. Some people don't care and they won't care. So you got to stop caring and you got to retreat and you got to go to the people who care. You got to go to the people who want the help, who want the, the relationship, who want the friendship. I'm not begging for no friends. Why would I do that when I'm a whole vibe? I know I'm a great friend. So why would I put myself in a position where I'm begging for something that I shouldn't even have to beg for? You shouldn't have to beg for your spouse to love you. That's a part of the contract. You shouldn't have to beg for your kids to listen to you and be obedient. That's a part of training them up, training up a child in the way that they should go so that when they get old, they shall not depart from it. Who got time to be begging? I ain't James Brown. I rock with who rocking with me. I'm loving who's loving on me. I'm building who want to build with me. Because anybody else, they just going to have to watch and see what I built. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you something. Your mental health is important. I have people trying to call me crazy. Oh, she crazy. She this, she that, she this, she that. No, baby. You crazy because you living a whole lie. You living a whole lie. I live my truth. And see, for people who live their truth, they seem crazy to other people. Because, wow. She's really authentic. I can't believe she's really this straightforward. Yeah, I am. Who got time to play? Because you want to live fake? Because you want to live a lie? And if you're tuning in, you're listening to yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. I'm talking about do not disturb. Because there are going to be people in your life that are going to come in your life to try to disrupt and disturb what you're building. And if they're not coming on the real deal, then they're coming on some real fake stuff. And you need to exit stage left or make sure they exit stage left. See, your mental health is wealth. Can't do nothing without this mind. Can't build no uh, Fortune 500 company if your mind ain't in a good space. You can't build no great relationship if your mind ain't in a great space. You can't build no friendship if your mind ain't in a great space. You can't build yourself up if your mind ain't in a great space. Your mind need to be protected. You trying to protect your money. You trying to protect your house. You're trying to protect your spouse. Listen, you better protect that mind, them thoughts, the, the things you're thinking. Because I'm going to tell you something. There was a time in my life where people said things to me and it, it made me feel some type of way about me. Not ever again. Not ever again. When you start loving on you, start knowing you, start operating you, anything that you disagree with about what somebody saying, you don't, you don't take, mm -mm. nah, you not, mm -mm. you this, you that. Oh, okay. Well, that's what you think. I'm gonna let you think that that's going to be your thoughts. Okay. Because at the end of the day, I'm gonna tell you something. Enjoy your life. You're going to have to enjoy it because there are going to be people that will be willing to do you wrong and they're going to go and sleep peacefully at night. There are going to be people that will stab you in the back and in the front and, 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 Put the knife right on the side and say, my bad. There are going to be people that's going to cross you. And they ain't even going to think twice about it. And you sitting over here crying about a friendship or a man or a woman or a business or a house. Let that stuff go. If it's not for your mental health, if it ain't bigging you up, building you up, taking you to the next level, it's distracting you. And it's going to distract your whole mindset and you won't be able to build what you're trying to build. Because I'm going to tell you something. I had to let some of this stuff out of me because if I didn't, I was going to go crazy. Some of you are dealing with grief. 
and you don't know how to deal with the losses of, of people in your life, whether it be a loss of a friendship, a loss of a life, a loss of a job, a loss of a home, a loss of a loved one. Some of us are grieving and we don't understand what, what phase we're in. And in a phasing of grief, you got different parts. You got anger, you got regret, you got unforgiveness, you, you got depression. And if you're not paying attention to your mind and your thoughts, you'll let them escape. And you'll let them start taking on their own thoughts. Oh, my business ain't going to never do this. Oh, my, he ain't going to never do this. She ain't going to, you start getting, you start letting your mind just wonder. Get your mind under subjection. That's why I fast. That's why I pray. That's why I keep people away from me. I don't let everybody in my personal circle. Yeah, everybody know me, but I don't let everybody lay hands on me. I ain't letting everybody pray for me. I ain't letting everybody speak into my life. And I damn sure ain't listening to everybody. Because there are some people that can speak a word into your life that's going to catapult you to the next level. And then there are going to be some people that's going to come in your life to disrupt it. And you have to put up the sign. Do not disturb. Listen, I love y'all. I want y'all to get out here and I want y'all to go be fruitful. Go multiply. Go walk in peace. Go walk in joy. Go walk in love. This world is broken. This city is so dark. When I got back from New York, y'all, I was like, where do I live? I can't wait to become an elected official because I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm about to show these elected officials what elected officials are really supposed to do for their city. <laughs> I can't wait till they let me in a office because I'm about to show you what you do with your budget. We tired of giving out book bags because our kids are broken. They don't need another book bag. These families really need help. They don't need no little $25 uh, gift certificate DTE. Stop playing with us. In a minute that you can have people stop playing with you, they're going to have to take you serious or they're going to have to leave you alone. I have set a standard in my life and I'm not going to allow nobody to come and disrupt it because the minute that I allow you access into my world and you're not going to mean me no good, you're disrupting my peace. And I cannot afford for you or anybody else to come disrupt what God has allowed me to build in this season. I ain't going to do it. Listen, if you're tuning in, you're listening to y'all said it before I take it back. I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. Listen, make sure you share this video. Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms. Make sure you tune in for the show tomorrow, my TV show, season two of Uncommon Conversations with Zsa Zsa. Listen, your girl is on a go. And before I know it, I'm going to look up and I'm going to be on syndicated late night talk show. Y'all going to see me with these celebrities and they're going to be sitting right here next to me on my little desk and I'm going to be doing my little interviews and all the people that supported me while I was building what I was building. Guess what? You're going to have access to the studio. You're going to be able to have a VIP back backstage passes. I'm going to remember the people who shared my videos when I didn't have nothing but just a dream. See, those are the people that you're going to have to be mindful and get that loyalty and that love to. Not the people who was acting like they were supporting you, but just watching you build. Because anybody that's calling themselves a friend, a family, or anything, they're going to help you build what you're building. Whether they're building or helping you a little bit or a lot of it, they're going to help. Do you hear me? They're going to help. People who want to see you win, they're going to do whatever they got to do to help you. Whether it's give you $5 for gas money, whether it's say a little prayer. There are some people that can't help me financially, but I know they, they, got, they got a word from God. There are some people that I know they can't help me spiritually, but they can put $20 in my pocket. There are some people... That they, they can't they can't uh be where I'm at and, and come to my events, but they'll share my stuff. They click that share button and keep their life moving. But the mother folks you better watch them, and you better place them on do not disturb. Listen, I love y'all. Have a wonderful week. Make sure y'all washing y'all hands. Listen, make sure you are taking your vitamins getting in that sun, getting you some fresh air, drinking your hot tea, making sure that you are staying F-boy and F-girl free. You heard me? Listen, yeah, I said it. And before I take it back, I'm going to add more to it. And I know you heard me the first time. I love y'all. Peace.